Hello everybody, today I'm coming to you with a different than usual video, but I'm so fucking excited, honestly. I just received a package from Johanna Pole. Uh, she is the creatrix of something very exciting that I'm going to show you. You already know from the title of this video what this is, but basically let's unbox it and then let's see the deets, talk about everything and uh, get hyped. <laughs> Ah, everything's so beautifully packaged, by the way. I think this is the deck. Um, we have a letter. I love this hue of purple or violet, by the way. And then we also have a book and a little paper that talks a bit more about what this is and the whole excitement of this project so basically yeah let's just unwrap everything so i'm gonna keep the letter to myself it's very sweet thank you johanna there's a little sticker which i'm very excited about because i can see that it's a snake with um, a tropa belladonna plant and I think a stang possibly. So these are like all of the things that I love. <laughs> awesome. But anyway, yeah, let's get down to the point of this whole thing. Uh, so Johanna contacted me not long ago to basically ask if I would like to be gifted this deck. Um, and uh, I have to say like, I was very excited because I've been following her progress with the deck and I think she started creating this in 2020, so it's been uh, almost four years now uh, that this has been in uh, the process of creation. Uh, so I've been meaning to pick up this deck anyway for myself. So when she contacted me and she let me know that uh, she would like to send this to me as a gift uh, because uh, some of the content that I put out there may have possibly, I think, <laughs> been helpful for her uh, during uh, the process of the creation of this deck. So I was like, fuck yes, I'm all up for this. And I also want to like put this out there for people to know because this is a one woman project. She made everything herself. She made a deck. She wrote a fucking book to go with it. And uh, she is also going to be uh, starting a Kickstarter very soon for the deck. If I understand correctly, if the deck doesn't get fully funded through Kickstarter, it will probably never be released out there for people. So uh, that would be a bummer, honestly. So I just want to make sure, like personally, for my <laughs> fucking gain, and because I think this is a worthwhile project, I want to make sure that this thing uh, gets out there and it gets funded. So if I can help in any way by making this uh, review, then yeah, by all means. So anyway, what I have here is actually a prototype of the deck um, and the companion book, which is pretty solid. And uh, from what Johanna was telling me about the project and she also sent me, you know, like details, I know that this is not the final product. This is a prototype that she um, basically got printed at a printers that she was not really happy with, um, you know, working with them uh, for various reasons. So I think the final version uh, is probably going to be even better, honestly. So keep that in mind. Uh, so when you open the box, um, this is what you get. You get a tiny uh, companion guidebook. Um, that's the size of the deck basically and you can get a even bigger one with much more detail separately so let's look at the cards first and the thing while I'm flipping through the cards I'm gonna be talking about why I am actually excited and so fucking hyped about this I'm sorry I'm swearing so much but I'm just so excited honestly so uh, the thing is that the deck's name the European goddesses and spirits that alone for me uh, really makes this deck stand out because uh, Johanna was really thorough with her research and uh, she recognizes something that's also very important for me as a practitioner um, that 
Not all of the um, beings included in this deck are considered goddesses. Oftentimes, um, especially when it's Western creators, this has to be said out loud, like people are obsessed with making goddesses out of spirits, uh, deifying spirits, um, which is just incorrect, honestly. Like for example, Baba Yaga, she is not a goddess, she's a spirit and uh, it needs to be acknowledged and uh, she needs to be approached with the respect that she deserves uh, in a kind of different context that she's usually placed in in kind of Western literature, I feel like. So what Johanna did with this deck, she combined um, only European goddesses and female spirits because these are the ones that are closest to home for her. She's from Germany. I totally understand that. Honestly, for me, when it comes to goddess decks in general, uh, the obstacle that uh, I usually encounter and which is why I don't work with goddess decks usually is that uh, those decks contain um, goddesses from all around the world like you know from Europe, from um, Africa, from Asia, from um, Northern and Southern Americas uh, and so on. So this is Giovanna by the way, a Slavic goddess. So it's often you know this weird mix of uh, deities from all over the globe and in my humble opinion it's kind of hard to uh, you know just give them all the kind of respect that they deserve and uh, I have my doubts if creators of such decks um, have enough knowledge to write about some of those deities in a way that's actually uh, culturally and historically correct. Um, and uh, I, I'm saying I have my doubts, but in fact, I am sure because I've had some of those decks in the past uh, that were focused either on one specific um, goddess or a bunch of goddesses. And usually it was just full of shit. So this one, uh, the way it's different and uh, why I am personally so excited about it. And Majanna, oh my God, <laughs> this is just... Uh, we are gonna look at the big uh, guidebook in a moment, so I'm gonna show you how much Johanna actually put in the effort to research and, um, you know, use sources that are historically correct and uh, give these spirits and goddesses justice that they deserve. Um, I just really appreciate the approach and I'm glad that finally we are going to have a deck out there that um, is kind of specific when it comes to location. So it's not all over the place and it's not approaching, uh, you know, goddesses as Jungian archetypes or whatever. These uh, cards were actually created to uh, connect with the beings that are close to home for you, to use them for devotion, uh, to help aid in, um, to help aid with um, achieving personal gnosis with some of those beings. And, uh, you know, I feel like for me as a European, this is the first time I'm seeing something that's just um, close to home and relatable for me. And even though I do not work with beings from pantheons other than the uh, Slavic one, um, I still appreciate that um, this is what the deck contains, only European uh, spirits and goddesses. So these were the cards themselves. This is the backing. And by the way, what I also love, and I always appreciate this when creators think about things like, like this, uh, even though this is a prototype, it was created from 100% recycled paper. And uh, I know that Johanna is very environmentally conscious and she wants the final version of the deck to also be eco-friendly as much as possible. I really appreciate that as an animist and uh, as a practitioner of witchcraft that uh, somebody putting a tool for spiritual practice out there um, takes into consideration the environmental impact of producing the tool in the first place. I feel like, you know, you know how it is, especially with mass market, they don't care, honestly. <laughs> so we as consumers need to make those decisions for ourselves to make sure we remain 
uh, aware and make ethical decisions. In this case, uh, you can be sure that Johanna is going to put in the effort to uh, ensure that this is as eco-friendly as possible. And now when it comes to the small guidebook, which is, um, you know, together comes together with the deck, basically, um, you get like what a page or two per spirit or deity more like a page i think and uh here you get the um keyword for each uh johanna mentions that she did not want to include um keywords on the cards themselves because if you work with a certain deity or spirit you might have your own associations already in place and they, they might not be the same as the ones that um, Johanna created. Uh, so I think this is very thoughtful and it does not impose certain perception of the spirit or deity onto you, which I, I really love that, honestly. So what you get is kind of like a divinatory meaning about the uh, deity or spirit. And then at the end, you get like a bunch of questions or prompts for journaling or maybe for pulling cards etc for self-reflection basically so this is really sweet and i feel like uh, the set of this booklet and the deck alone uh, is enough for people who mostly would be using this for uh, divination or like for you know self-reflection etc but for those of you who are more interested in you know actually getting to the meat of it, getting to know uh, the beings more and uh, especially, you know, exploring the kind of um, historical, well-sourced information about each of those beings, um, spirits and uh, goddesses. Uh, this book is just beautifully produced, honestly. It has this, you know, kind of velvety cover. I'm not sure, again, if this is the final form of the book. I know that it's not the final for form of the deck, for sure. I don't know about, about the book. Um, and you have, like, you know, illustrations on the entire page. Then you get uh, some themes for each of the deities. And I'm glad I just opened on Giovanna. We are going to read this one. And uh, I am going to compare this with you know, my own knowledge and experience, which I feel like is fairly extensive considering that I uh, also teach about this and create content about this. So yeah, this is the kind of, um, you know, sources portion. Uh, then you have intuition, which from what I understand is exactly what you get in the small guidebook. So it's more like a divinatory focus uh, of each of those spirits. Then you also get those prompts, questions for um, journaling, and then you get correspondences, which is fucking amazing for, you know, ritual, for devotional work, uh, for actually connecting with the spirits, not just reading about them, not just, you know, getting to know the theory or the story, but you can actually use these correspondences to, um, you know, kind of have a starter, know where to start if you would like to connect with a specific deity or a spirit. So let's read Giovanna actually. Let's see what's written in here. So uh, Giovanna themes independence, wilderness, the hunt, strength, freedom, the moon, animals. Giovanna is a Western Slavic goddess of wild nature, the hunt, and the moon. She is also known under the names Devana, Zevana, and Jevonia, which is correct, depending on the region. Like, Jevanna is the Polish name, and Devana would be like a um, Czech version of that same name. Uh, the meaning of her name remains unclear. The old Polish word Dziwy, meaning wild, is one possible origin of her name, as well as the words Dziewa, Dziewka, translating to girl, young woman or maiden. All of these interpretations seem to emphasize Giovanna's nature as both the wild woman and the virgin goddess, which, yep, totally. <laughs> she is independent and strong-willed and bound to no one but herself. As a skilled hunter and the mother of animals, Giovanna is a fierce, strong, crafty and brave goddess who roams the woods and uh, mountains of her homelands. She is said to be a shapeshifter that can take the form of any animal. She often appears as a mare, bear or wolf. 
In her human form, Giovanna is often depicted wearing a bear skin and being accompanied by her two wolf companions. Since Giovanna is often coupled with Majanna in spring ceremonies, researchers suspect a connection between these two deities. Majanna as the lady of death and Giovanna as the maiden could be two faces of one goddess of life and death, possibly similar to the two-faced goddess Hell from Norse mythology. And yeah, this is one of the theories. We have uh, quite a few others, but honestly, these things, <laughs> it's kind of hard to dig for this type of information. So I feel like Johanna really had to put some time and effort to actually get to this stuff, uh, which is really fucking appreciated, honestly, because the way I usually see uh, Slavic goddesses depicted in decks like this or in uh, books about various goddesses is just, you know, <laughs> You know what I mean. Um, after the Christianization, Giovanna appears to have survived in Western Slavic culture in the form of the figure Matka Boża Gromniczna, Polish for Our Lady of the Thunder, Thunder Candle. She is celebrated on Candle Mass on February 2nd. Iconography depicts her with wolves as her servants and a gromnica, Polish for thunder candle, in her hand. Traditionally, these candles were made of natural beeswax only, with a wick made of fibers of verbascum. Verbascum is one of the most sacred herbs in Western Slavic paganism dedicated to Giovanna. In the Polish language, this herb is still called Giovanna, exactly like the goddess. This is also correct, of course, and uh, I appreciate that she also mentions the syncretism that appeared after Christianization, which is also correct because we syncretize Giovanna with Matka Boża Gromniczna, so the uh, Mother Mary of Thunder Candle. Uh, now moving on to the intuition part, um, so this is the kind of divinatory message. The goddess Giovanna is a fierce protector of wild animals and her forest realm. She is accompanied by two wolves and can also shapeshift into one herself. As symbols of Giovanna, wolves emphasize the wild goddess's core aspects. Despite being naturally friendly and playful, wolves are extremely protective of their pack and territory when threatened in any way. While often misunderstood as ferocious beasts, the wolf's gentle side manifests in the nurturing instincts of their females. Giovanna is both a maternal figure and a folkloric symbol of fertility who embodies the she-wolf archetype. She knows how to guide and protect her pack without fear or insecurity. She learns from her experiences and trusts her inner wisdom. Unlike dogs, wolves are not domesticated. Their wilderness and their instincts still live within them. Humans used to be wild as well. No matter how detached from nature we may feel, we are still a part of it. Our intuition is alive inside of us. Even now, the body sends more signals to the brain than the other way around. Giovanna's message for you is to pause before making any decision or judgments. Take a moment to ask yourself, what does your gut say? What does your heart say? Can you tap into your intuition? Listening to your intuition requires practice. You can train on a regular basis in everyday choices and decisions, like what to eat or what activity to match your current energy level. The more you tune into your intuition, the easier it will become to sense and trust it. And here's the prompts. Um, do you know how to tap into your intuition? What steps can you take to develop the skill? What are, your, what are you sensing right now? What is your gut's reaction to your current situation? How does your body communicate with you? How can you listen to it? I really appreciate this uh, focus on things that you can actually you know, do in a mindful way uh, to help yourself, you know. Uh, this is really kind of down to earth and not very like woo-woo, but instead something that uh, a person seeking counsel uh, with a spirit or a deity uh, might appreciate as something that's actually helpful. Now let's see for the correspondences. So uh, connecting with Giovanna Mullen, verbascum sinuatum. Uh, so verbascum, again mullen, in Polish it's called Giovanna, the same as the goddess. Also known under its common name, mullen is sacred to the goddess Giovanna. To connect with her, you can integrate this herb into your practice. 
There are multiple ways to work with mullen. A traditional use of verbascum is to craft, uh, craft smoke cleansing sticks out of it or to hang it in your home for protection. Uh, there are some more uses, like you can create candles with it. Uh, it's also used for actually like smoking the herb for specific purposes, etc. But this is a good base. Um, now, the next thing is forest shrine. Among the creatures most sacred to Devanna are mare, wolf, bear, fox, weasel and hare. All of these animals are native to European forests. To connect with her, you can build your own forest shrine in your home. Decorate a sacred space with objects mindfully collected from or related to this, these animals and the woods. This is really cute, actually. And lastly, thunder candle. Giovanna is celebrated on February 2nd in the guise of the Lady of the Thunder Candle. A traditional and very potent way to craft your own gromnica is by using Giovanna's sacred herb verbascum as the main ingredient. In this case, the mullen is used as a wick. To make a thunder candle, you simply dip a tall dried stalk of mullen several times into beeswax. Yeah, okay, so she mentions it here. Um, I really like this uh, and that's it when it comes to the uh, Giovanna and you get the same for each deity. So you get the research or historical slash cultural uh, information, then you get the divinatory part and then you get correspondences for actually practicing something related to this being. So this is really well made, I think, uh, because I'm a nerd and if you don't like that, then just feel free to skip ahead. I'm also going to read Majanna, okay? Uh, Majanna is a deity that I have a really close connection with. So um, I would just like to, you know, read the research part basically to see uh, if we agree with Johanna about this goddess. So the themes are cycles, death, winter, harvest, rebirth, growth, witchcraft, dreams, nightmares. I am already liking this. <laughs> uh, the Slavic goddess of seasonal rebirth has many names. Majanna, Polish, Marena, Russian, and Mara, Ukrainian, and are only three of them. Yeah, there are many more, like for example, Morana would be in Czech. She is a deity associated with dreams, seasonal rites, agriculture, time, death and rebirth. In the Mater Verbotum, a medieval dictionary written in the 13th century, Czech scholars compare Majanna to the Greek goddess Hecate and thus link her to witchcraft and so sorcery. Uh, her name is possibly derived from the Proto-Indo-European root Mar or Mor, which alludes to death or the sea also, I would like to add. Contemporary pagans often describe Majanna as a personification of winter. However, it is important to remember that she is a goddess who is present throughout the whole year. She commands the natural world in the entirety of its cyclical order and is not solely linked to death and the dark season. The springtime burning or drowning of an effigy representing Majanna is a folk custom that has survived in some Slavic countries to this day. It is a ritual which uh, recreates Majanna's mythological descent into the underworld. It is symbolic of chasing away winter, the triumph over darkness and the reawakening of nature. The goddess Majanna is inseparably linked to Giovanna, not only due to their paired appearances in spring ceremonies. Some scholars suspect that they could be two faces of a single goddess of life and death that drifted apart into two separate deities over time. Both Majanna and Giovanna possess uh, complementary connections to nature, as the maiden Giovanna represents the wild and untamed side of the earth. Majanna, as the mother, rules over the fertile soil humans use for agriculture. This is echoed in their respective associated plants. While Giovanna's sacred herb mullen, verbascum sinuatum, grows on soil that is not suitable for farming and therefore Considered wild, Majanna's herb mother, Rubia tinctorum, is cultivated by humans on fertile land. And by the way, mother, the herb, is also uh, called Majanka in Polish, so uh, this is a cool connection as well. So um, I'm not gonna read anymore, just gonna look quickly about some correspondences. The sickle, the goose and mother. Yeah, great! 
I like this, you know, um, I can see that this is well researched and uh, if she did such good of a job for the Slavic deities, I don't know, I think I, you can be pretty sure that she did the same for each of those. So uh, I'm really enjoying this, honestly. I think this is something that's one of a kind. There is no other deck like this currently on the market that would be, uh, you know, focused on European goddesses and spirits only for one and two being actually well researched you know so i think this is something unique that um is really worth uh you know taking into consideration if you would maybe like to uh help fund this thing because i think it should be out there uh to stand out from all the kind of poorly researched and very eclectic uh and kind of you know like Tumblr level research decks about goddesses from all, the, all around the world. Basically, I know I am very critical of those other decks, but honestly, I have been reading cards for years. And uh, to me, most of those decks that um, include deities of any type uh, or spirits sometimes deified as deities, even though they shouldn't be, um, they often portray them as almost like pop culture figures from a book or a movie. And uh, I feel that on some levels, I get it, but on other levels, and I mean cultural specifically, it's disrespectful to the spirits and the deities that get this kind of treatment. Uh, I can only speak for uh, Slavic deities because those are the only ones that um, I encounter in my practice. I do not mix pantheons. When I go out there and see content from creators, um, like, you know, books, decks, whatever, about the deities and spirits from my culture, I oftentimes see that there was no care put into uh, considering the cultural aspects and actually researching those beings properly uh, so that they are given the respect that they deserve. And so uh, what I want to see out there are decks that are well researched and respectful to the beings that uh, they include. Just to show you quickly, we get an actual bibliography, which <laughs> in my opinion, this is what um, makes this deck stand out, um, apart from other similar decks, because if you check out the guidebooks for those, and I've had a fair share of those decks in the past, I've gotten rid of them because um, they weren't up to my standards. None of them have bibliography, which means that the creators just write uh, whatever they want about the deities and uh, you can guess how legit that is. But here you get one page, two pages, three pages, three and a half pages of books and I can see here uh, just by skimming through it that these are names of well-known researchers and uh, sources and books that uh, people often um, use to research specific cultures, specific deities, myths of Europe. So uh, this is a bonus for anybody who would be using this deck to add some of these to their to-be-read pile. <laughs> And lastly, you also get some online resources, which I'm happy, very happy to see that my name is here as well with my patron and the resources I provide about Slavic magic and folklore. This is very, very sweet. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, Johanna, for including me. If you enjoy the uh, deck and if you enjoy what you've seen here, uh, I will be posting the Kickstarter link um, under the video and also in other places as soon as it's available. Um, and I hope that if you enjoyed this, then you will consider uh, backing this project because again, Johanna made all of this by herself. She created all of the artwork, she wrote the whole fucking guidebook and I can see that this took so much time and energy, which is probably why it took four years to complete this project. I'm just honestly in awe as a creator. I just know how much time and effort these things take, especially if you want to be including legit sources and legit information about deities from quite a few cultures. So um, yeah, I really appreciate this uh, and uh, good luck to Johanna. 
Thank you so much for watching. Bye.